地獄の数字だなあれから13年薄まることなく俺に刻み込まれた過去上等だ一生つきまとってくるなら俺も一生踏みつけてやるだけだあの日からずっとそうしてきた There's an animalistic defiance ingrained in our DNA that goads us on to take action in response to oppression. Something that drives us to rise above our station and strive for better, especially in response to being pushed down. When you have experienced the lowest of the low, the extremes of misery, and something close to hell itself, you'd naturally want to make sure that you never experience it again. So, you would try to rip that horrible time from your consciousness no matter what, trying to detach it from the fundamentals of who you are, because, of course, no one would want to be associated with something so horrible. And what do these attempts result in? A fierce, feral determination to shoot to the top of society's hierarchy at any cost, a concrete willingness to forego vulnerability, and a dark defiance in the face of anything that comes in your way. At its worst, the setting of Beastars is one that results in this type of terrible upbringing for the most unfortunate. A world that pushes the downtrodden further and further, disregarding individual lives as merchandise or food, unfairly alienating and exiling others, and overall just showing the harsh end results of a society that just doesn't give everyone a fair chance at life for cruel and arbitrary reasons. Louis is a significant part of that chain of misery, and his role in the story, his behaviors, motivations, outlook, how he and Legacy act as foils for one another, it all paints a bold picture of what this series is trying to say. In season one, Louis is arguably the saddest and loneliest character in the entirety of Beastars, which says a hell of a lot given the story that we're discussing. And subsequently, he is someone whose backstory and resulting characterization say more about the setting than anything else ever could. An individual who has learned the harsh truths of the world to a greater extent than most, and one who, above all, has been forced to grow up way too quickly. その時、ルイ先輩の表情が一瞬普通の18歳のように揺れた気がしたけどでも錯覚だったのかもしれない。Louis is a red deer that had been taken captive and raised to be sold as food in the black market at age five, along with some other young herbivores. Due to having grown up in a prison of sorts as numbered merchandise, he has the number four tattooed on his foot, which is actually considered to be a highly unlucky, cursed number in Japanese culture. In this prison, Louis and his fellow captives spent every day living in fear of death for both themselves and their friends. It was torture. An exercise in biding time, waiting to see if they would be the next selected to be eaten. Yet, one day, someone came in, not to eat any of the animals, but to free one. A wealthy business owner named Oguma was looking for an animal to be heir to his conglomerate to ensure its sustained health. Ultimately, he decided to pick Louis as his son and heir. However, the details of this encounter are significantly different depending on whether you're experiencing this story in the anime or the manga. Note that these differences are laid out well in a series of tweets that I will link in the description for reference. In the anime, Oguma decided to take Louis after witnessing him trying to prevent a fellow captive from being eaten, saying that he had a strong sense of justice for protecting his friend. This isn't a bad explanation or backstory, but it is a little weak and lacking in substance compared to its manga counterpart. Because in the source material, the nuances are very different. Here, Oguma selects Louis to be free due to him being a fellow red deer, and as such, a fitting choice to carry on his name. But Louis refused to go with him, because he had no intentions of leaving his friends behind to be eaten, and because it wasn't fair to him that he would be set free while they stayed behind. As those tweets I mentioned put it, due to this, Oguma saw a sort of self-righteousness within Louis, and a strong sense of solidarity with his herbivore brethren, with him feeling as if he should suffer the same fate as them. 
Oguma took him regardless, and proceeded to throw him in a room full of hungry carnivores with only a knife to defend himself, to see what would happen and if he was really worthy of being his heir. And what Louis proceeded to do was hold the knife to his throat, truly intending to kill himself rather than be eaten alive and treated as living food. Oguma pulled him back to safety, and realized with admiration that this young fawn would rather die than lower himself to be food. This stubborn pride and the prior display of self-righteousness are what told Oguma that Louis was the perfect son to carry on his name, someone who could turn his pain and suffering into fuel for changing the world. So Louis was adopted here and consequently grew up in the wealthiest of families. But the experiences of that hell never really left him and still haunted his nightmares, causing him to think of his brand as a curse that never really leaves him and always reminds him of his weakness. But he finds it appropriate that it's at the bottom of his foot, because it allows him to walk all over it, to try and stamp out his past and put it behind him. Louis hates where he comes from, and his mentality means that he wants no part of it, in spite of how closely this past follows him. He is so diametrically opposed to feeling inferior to anything and weak in any sense because it brings back horrific memories, so Louis grew up festering this self-righteousness and pride into something very feral and dark, into an extreme sort of superiority complex. And at the same time, he's been forced to mature quickly and artificially due to the expectations hoisted upon him by his adopted father. But those expectations pale in comparison to the ones he has for himself. He is his own worst critic and enemy, and the combination of all of these factors leads to the characterization that we see in the story. Shigusa, Koe, Mesen. Louis despises being treated as inferior or less powerful than anyone else, so basically he hates being treated as herbivores tend to be treated. He cannot feel lesser, and he cannot have others think of him as lesser. He hates pity and hates being looked down upon in any sense, because it bears repeating that he associates those familiar feelings of inferiority with the torrid times of his early childhood, and he never wants to be in that place again. He desires to be at the top of the food chain and societal hierarchy, and in the most extreme cases, this manifests as a desire to lord over others as compensation, to shove the faces of those society views as stronger into the dirt. It's disgusting for him to have to fight this, and his physical limitations due to being an herbivore fuel a huge amount of insecurity since it makes his desires exponentially tougher. Plus, it doesn't help that he was at the literal mortal mercy of carnivores when he was a captive. This aspect of his character is made clearer than ever in a manga-exclusive scene in the early act of the story, after Bill accidentally injures Louis while practicing. After taunting Louis and saying that he's a fragile herbivore that gets hurt easily, Bill says that he found out about Louis's past while he was in the black market. He uses this information to poke and prod the deer, who had previously seemed to be at an untouchable level, to bring him down to earth, partly due to some carnivore pride bigging him up after eating meat on the black market for the first time. But shockingly, Louis pulls out a gun on Bill, telling him not to speak a word of his past to anyone or else he'll kill him. He then tells Bill to try and tell him that they're equals, given their respective positions. It's a literal reversing of the roles here through material power from Louis, as he rises above and pins down a carnivore, being a brilliant scene in showing who he is at heart. He wants to be the one who has them at his mercy. He is so against the idea of being inferior, even being equal to those like Bill, that he takes it extremely personally when they try to bring him down from his lofty status. It also depicts how absolutely desperate he is to ensure that no one finds out about his past, how desperate he is to remain unblemished and strong. All in all, it's an encapsulation of Louis's insecurities, dark intensity, feral superiority complex, and his aversion to weakness. But while this may give the impression that Louis is a loose cannon of sorts, that isn't correct. 
He can get very scary when his deepest demons are laid bare, but he has more measured ideals as well. While he is consistently aware of physical strength, that is not the be-all and end-all, and he judges others by their character. And that's why he chastises Legacy for dulling his instincts and being afraid to use them, thinking that he lacks in resolve at first. He has his own ideas of what conviction means, along with a firm set of ideals that dictate what he believes true justice in the world should be. As such, his goal is to fix the customs of society, and he plans to do this by attempting to become the B-Star. By being the lead actor for the stage club, he is able to both create a facade and aura of power around him, and cement his role and status at the top of Cheriton. As such, he can play the self-confident leader to hide his insecurities. And he does all this because he has this unflinching determination to seek better in this society. It's such an extreme form of pride and defiance, one that's so full of resentment due to Louis's circumstances. Add all that to the fact that he also has tons of pressure to be the heir to his father's business, and Louis is under so much strain to achieve the things that he must, often feeling as though he has to jump through hurdles that shouldn't be there in the first place. He can't marry who he wants, he doesn't do what truly makes him happy. But his story is one of masks, perpetuating false narratives to propel himself upward in the world, to create prosperity for his herbivore kin in response to how beaten up he was in his upbringing. A story of a fierce, dark determination to turn the world upside down and reverse the broken narrative, to defy what seems like fate. And to do this, he must make do with what he has, not being blessed with the strongest body in the world. So, he plays the part in doing things the proper way, with the eventual goal of becoming the B-Star in mind. He hides his blemishes, his past, his injuries. Everything about him becomes very measured, very deliberate. But this means that he can rarely be himself, and the highly uncommon moments where he is unfiltered, threatening Bill, interacting with Legacy, opening up to Haru, show a flawed, vulnerable young deer who was never able to be a kid. It's no coincidence that the person he's most comfortable and at peace with is the one who has seen his imperfections and truth. But apart from Haru, Louis is tragically under the impression that he cannot be his true self, and that nothing productive will come from being genuine. Masks of arrogance, primal aggression, disdain for others, Louis covers everything up to maintain his status, and he does all of this primarily to shut out the painful memories of that scared, fragile young fawn. He does all of it to forget, and loses himself in doing so. <laughs> But what Louis is slowly coming to realize is the same thing that Legacy has had to come to grips with. That you can't repress and bury a fundamental part of yourself. Everything about you, whether it be your shadow or your past, is part of your identity, like it or not. You cannot erase these things. Yet, what you can do is change your perspective and use that aspect of self in a different, more empowering way. Louis will never be separated from the terrified number four that he was as a child, and as such, he was never destined to be a prim and proper model citizen. His past made sure of that by planting these seeds within him. But he can't let this rage and aimless desperation guide his life, because it will get him nowhere. Louis wants to seek better than what he was born into, and he wants to change the world that made his life hell. And those are lofty ambitions that can't be achieved without a method. But thanks in no small part to Legacy, Louis is slowly learning about the type of life he wants to live, and what he needs to do to achieve his goals. I said that he has a desire to seek better in society, and before long, Louis senses this in Legacy too, which is why he has a respect for him in spite of his jealousy and resentment. The two are more alike than one would initially think. In the play, Legacy lashes out at Bill because he represents the full-blooded animal nature that Legacy sees in himself and fears. Him beating up Bill is a form of self-hate. But Louis, through deriding Legacy in the beginning for hiding who he truly is and not embracing it, is doing the exact same thing through his masks and through not embracing his whole self. 
Through this show of supposed strength in trying to erase his past, he's showing his biggest, truest weakness. Both animals hate and struggle against a part of themselves, and both have to learn to live with that part. Legosi's display shows Louis that him fighting against himself and struggling to tame his beast is not a lack of conviction, it's a display of it. And Louis's growing respect for Legosi as he slowly learns to coexist with his instinct through exploring it is a subconscious, indirect form of him showing that he isn't comfortable with his current path. It isn't fulfilling or right for him. Legosi begins to shed his facade and accept himself, foregoing his former tendency to be proper. It presents a sense of identity and purpose that Louis had been lacking, which he respects in the wolf. And this helps Louis to reflect on himself and his current place, which lets him see that his path and position put him in a place where he is unable to protect the people he cares about. <laughs> Frustrated, he sees that those with proper institutional power still have tons of reductive red tape, and if being at the top means that he has to do things that he himself doesn't approve of, then he doesn't want to do things the proper way. For him, there seems to be two choices. Become the B-star through treading the proper avenues, and lead society while being stifled by restrictions that undercut his true motivations, or live the life of an average herbivore as society would see it. But neither is what he desires, so Louis seeks a third option. Here, Legosi influences him and indirectly empowers his inner motivations, and Louis seeks to rule society in a different way. And so, through leaving Cheriton, he abandons this old path, this old way of life, and looks towards a new, more pragmatic future. Through Legosi, Louis learned where he went wrong and has a decent idea of what he needs to do now. He needs to find a way to enact true change, to reverse the false narrative that led to his suffering, and to protect the people that he cares about. Legosi's display of fumbling in the dark in a tug of war with his animal nature made Louis look at him in a different way. That wolf is unique. He's not conforming, and he's not giving up searching for a place for himself, even if the world seems to give him a bad hand. Legosi has a firm eye on the type of person he wants to be, and that's something that Louis isn't quite sure of himself. But he does know what he doesn't want the world to be. He doesn't want it to remain as it is now. He wants to bury that sort of world, and bring about a new one. And maybe that endeavor is the key. Maybe that ambition is what Oguma saw as the spark that would lead to a new order. Tim. It's incredibly admirable of Louis to understand that his stance is inefficient and brittle, because it's not easy to give up on a path when so much intense pride has become associated with that path. But he understands that the way forward for him is not what he assumed. It's a future clouded in the unknown. And Louis is anything but cowardly, so he'll explore that world if he must. Just like his carnivore friend, Louis just has to come to terms with a part of himself that he will never bury or change. He is an herbivore, and he is number four. That is a fundamental, permanent aspect of his past and present that will never stop being a huge part of who he is. He can't alter that but he can wrestle within himself and accept this instead of hiding from it, and he can use it to power himself towards his goals. There is no one in the world like Louis, so naturally there are things that only he, in his own specific situation, can do. And maybe that might be the key to finding his own unique fulfillment in this world. To progress past the darkness, the hatred, the superiority complex, and the bitterness, and to find something worth living for, instead of forcing himself through life. 
Many thanks for watching. Meo Ha, 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 ha.